Hi folks. So continuing our series here, we're going to get into parallel circuits today. Now parallel circuits are a little more complicated to understand than series circuits are. And we're going to introduce uh, the math concept of reciprocals. Um, again, with calculators, this is a really simple exercise. And I will explain why we're doing what we're doing. And hopefully that will take some of the mystery out of it. Um, once we get past here, we're probably going to start talking about components, their schematic symbols, and things like that. We'll have to discuss AC versus DC, which adds a new element, frequency. And we're going to touch briefly on frequency as we talk about reciprocals. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, let's shut down here, get set up, and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so here we have our Ohm's Law wheel in our parallel circuit. I've taken the same values of resistors, and now, instead of them all being in series, they are in parallel. And that brings up our second axiom or constant here, and that is, while current is the same in the series circuit, and we talked about that in the previous video, Voltage is the same in a parallel circuit. Now the currents are all going to be different because we have different values of resistance. But you can see, if you look, that anywhere in this circuit you are simply measuring your supply across these conductors. So the voltage is always going to be the same in a parallel circuit. It's the currents that are going to be different. And calculating this is also going to be a little bit different because if you recall in the series example that we previously worked on, we simply added up our resistances because they were one after the other in line in series. These are parallel, so we're going to have to take a slightly different approach. And that approach is we are going to add the conductances together. And I'll show you how we do this, and it brings up the term reciprocal. And we're going to have to talk a little bit about that because reciprocity occurs in several different places in electronics. So we're going to have a talk about that, then we're going to do some calculating, then we will measure like we did in the previous video. Okay, we knew this day was going to come. We're going to have to talk about reciprocals. Now, there are certain... Um, things in electronics that we talk about that have reciprocity with one another. For instance, frequency. Uh, the opposite or re reciprocal of frequency is time. Now that may not be readily apparent uh, until you consider what frequency is. Frequency is simply how many times something occurs within a second. It used to be known as cycles per second, which was a far more descriptive name, uh, but it was changed to honor Heinrich Hertz. So now we use Hertz for frequency. And it's simply events per second or cycles per second. Now, the opposite of that would be seconds per cycle. How long does it take something to occur? When we're dealing with very low frequencies, it's sometimes helpful to not measure the frequency, but to measure what's known as the period. And the period is how long does it take for each cycle to occur? So the reciprocal of frequency is period or time. So instead of looking at <coughs> events per second, we're looking at seconds per event. So I bring this up because the, the reciprocal of resistance is conductance. And again, we measure conductance in units called Siemens to honor, um, I believe it was Ernst von Siemens. I, I don't recall. I looked it up, but I don't remember. In any event, the old name I got a kick out of. The unit of resistance is the ohm. The unit of conductance was the mo. It was simply ohm spelled backwards. I think Lord Kelvin was the one to coin that. It's fallen out of favor, but personally I could prefer it because it's simply more descriptive. So what we do to convert resistance to conductance is take the reciprocal. Now how do we get a reciprocal? It's very simple and there's a key on the calculator that does it for you. All you're doing is you're dividing the value into one and that'll give you the inverse. Uh, we do this for frequency and time. We do it for um, uh, capacitive reactants, which we'll talk about later. We're, we're going to do it here to turn resistance into conductance. Because once we do that, we can add the conductances together, take that sum, 
and the reciprocal of that turns it back into resistance. And that's how we get the total resistance in a parallel circuit. I'll show you the formula. It's nothing to be afraid of. Look, if I can do this math, you can. With calculators, it's simple. And you could probably download a uh, scientific calculator. You want a scientific because it'll have all these functions on there on your phone for probably for free. So let's look at the formula and I'll show you how it's done. And I'll show you a little trick to let you know if you've made a mistake or not. Okay, so here's our formula. We're gonna take the reciprocal of the first resistance, add it to the reciprocal of the second resistance, add that to the reciprocal of the third resistance, and then we are gonna take the reciprocal of that. Now, don't be freaked out by it. It's really just a series of keystrokes. You'll see how simple it is. And here's a little trick. You'll know you've got it right if your answer is less than the lowest value of resistor in the circuit. Now, the reason for this is we have parallel paths here. And if you've ever worked with speakers, you know two 8-ohm speakers in parallel give you 4 ohms. If you have an 8-ohm and a 4-ohm, it's going to be less than 4 ohms. It's always going to be less than the lowest value. So let's do the math on this and see what we get. So our formula is here. So we need to take the reciprocal of 1.2 exponent 3, 1 over x, plus 5.6 exponent 3, remember exponent 3 gives us k ohms, 1 over x plus 4.7 exponent 3, 1 over x equals, and then we do 1 over x here to go back to resistance, and we get 816.5 ohms. So we're just going to call that 816 ohms. And as you can see, that is less than our lowest value. So we have 816 ohms calculated. So I have, as I did yesterday, soldered three resistors, only this time in parallel. We're going to tape them up here. And look at that. They fell right too. A little short, but okay. Anyway... Let's measure our three resistors and see just how close we came to our total. We should measure, let's see, I'm gonna have to tilt that so we can see it. Okay, that's visible. So, if we go and we just measure in parallel, we get 814 ohms. Again, you're gonna have some pro you're gonna have some discrepancy because these resistors aren't exactly this value. If we measured each one, we would get exactly that. No need, we're really just proving the concept here. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing I did yesterday is I am going to take this up here we're going to calculate before we put any voltage up here what the voltage drop should be and then we're going to measure it. Now we know how much resistance we have paralleled that will allow us to calculate our current using the Ohm's law wheel. Okay so we know now that the uh, total of our parallel resistances come out to 816 ohms and to figure out what the total current through the circuit is we do the same formula we did before which is I equals E over R. Okay so we know that E is 12 volts and we know that R is 816 ohms and that yields us a total current of 0.0147 amps or 14.7 milliamps. Now this is going to be our total current. So that is 14.7 milliamps. Now our voltage drops are going to be identical because remember this is a parallel circuit. However, 
The current going through each one of these resistors will be different and the sum total of all three currents should get us to 14.7 milliamps. So we calculate that using Ohm's law. We know that we have 12 volts and 1.2K. So we want to calculate the current. We're going to use the same formula that we used right here. And that is I equals E over R. So let's do that. We know that we have 12 volts and we know our resistance is 1.2 exponent 3. And that yields us 10 milliamps. Okay, so we have 10 milliamps here. The next one is going to be 12 volts divided by, and I'm just going to put in 5,600 ohms. It's going to yield the same type of answer. And that tells us we have 2.1 milliamps. So this is 2.1 milliamps. My handwriting is usually not quite this bad. You have to forgive me. The last one is 12 divided by 4,700. And that yields us 2.5, we'll just call that 2.5 milliamps. All right, so we have 2.5, roughly 2.5, 2.6. So 10, 12.1, 14.5, we calculated 14.7. So, again, with the rounding errors, you can see this is 2.55319. With the rounding errors, we know that we are close enough here. And it demonstrates that while voltage is the same in a parallel circuit, that the current is actually different. Okay, so this unholy mess you see before you is necessitated by the fact that we're going to have to break each one of these resistors in order to measure the current through it. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is that we do have 12 volts here. Let's see if we can just dial that a little closer. Okay, so we have 12 volts going in. We want to see how much current we have going through each resistor and how close it is to what we measured sorry, it to what we calculated. We're measuring now, we calculated previously. So I need to turn my meter to milliamps and then change it from AC to DC. And then we move the lead into the 400 milliamp. So that hole there should yield that. And if I measure the current through this resistor, We get 10.02. We calculated 10. That one looks pretty good. So now we move this to here. We calculated 2.1 milliamps here. We get 2.14. And lastly, we calculated 2.5 here. And we got 2.57. Now again, Some of this is rounding errors, and some of this is the fact that the tolerance of these resistors may be a little above or below the stated values. But you can see the math works. That's the whole point we're trying to get across here. These are things you want to have an understanding of. There are times when we're troubleshooting when we need to calculate what our voltage or current might be. Uh, as I said before, we may have a resistor that's burning up. We want to know why. <clears throat> so we can calculate how much current is going through, and then we can calculate the power. And if it's a quarter watt, half watt, one watt resistor, we can see if we're above or below that and if we have a problem. So this is a, a useful skill to have. Ohm's law is a brilliant, brilliant tool because of its simplicity. If you have two knowns, you can calculate an unknown. And there are four quadrants on here, as we discussed before. We have power, current, voltage, and resistance. And with these four parameters, 
And these three formulas in each quadrant, we can calculate pretty much anything we need to know. So I think I'm going to stop this video here. The next one, we're going to start talking about components, resistors, capacitors, inductors. These are known as passive components. Then we'll have a discussion of active component, components, such as diodes, transistors, uh, MOSFETs. We're going to have to go into integrated circuits, talk about those. As we talk about these, we're going to look at schematic symbols. And we will talk, of course, about ideal components and how far our components fall short in the real world. So anyhow, folks, that concludes this video. Like I said, I like to keep them short when we're discussing concepts you might not be familiar with. And I want to thank everyone for watching, for all your wonderful comments. And um, I want to remind everyone, if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's, it's an easy for, way for me to monetize this without asking for donations. And as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.